Hello, welcome to the Thursday, October 12th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Centers Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Singapore. Let's start with a little bit additional information about this week's Patch Tuesday. First of all, there was one update that's pretty significant that I didn't really point out uh, when I sort of discussed it uh, earlier this week, and that's S-MIME in Microsoft Outlook. S-MIME is typically used to encrypt emails and under certain conditions, Microsoft Outlook will encrypt the email but retain an unencrypted copy of the email and send both to the recipient. Typically, you're using S-MIME in order to accomplish end-to-end -end encryption between the sender and the recipient. It's different than TLS. Uh, TLS encrypts data as it's being transferred from the sender to the mail server or between mail servers, but uh, TLS does not actually encrypt the file as it's being saved by the mail client. S-MIME is different in that way, and as such, it's usually considered more reliable and secure. The problem here with Outlook was that if you sent an email in plain text and then encrypted it using S-MIME in Outlook, it actually sent it as a multi-part message. One part was properly encrypted, but the original content was just included as a second part to the message. So the recipient would open the message, it looked encrypted to the recipient, but really wasn't. Apparently this has been going on for about half a year. Now, if you send emails as HTML emails, then the encryption worked properly. By default, Outlook does send emails as HTML, so those emails were not affected, but if you reply to a plain text email, then Outlook usually uses a plain text. Also, if the message was sent to a remote user that used a different exchange server, then typically the unencrypted part got removed. So for the most part, disaffected emails that were sent in plain text to a recipient that used the same exchange server as the sender. So if you are relying on SMIME encrypted email, uh, you have to go back and check uh, which emails you may still have sitting in Outlook that appear to be encrypted, but still include that plain text part. And then I mentioned also yesterday that there were no vulnerabilities in Flash that were patched. That remains correct. However, Adobe did release a new version of Flash Player. It only fixes functional problems, not security problems. And if you are using Ruby, be aware that Ruby Gems was vulnerable to a remote code execution vulnerability. The root cause here was as so often unsafe object deserialization. What this means is that an object is being sent to the website and as it's being parsed, the checksum in this case in particular could actually contain not just a simple checksum, but a more complex additional YAML object which will then lead to arbitrary code execution. The particular problem here is that Ruby Gems, of course, is used by the Gems website that is being used to upload libraries. And there was some concern that the integrity of the libraries being sent and saved on the site is affected. Now, the team behind Ruby Gems went over the libraries, didn't find a problem, but however, be aware that if you're using Ruby Gems yourself, uh, that you have to be careful to patch uh, this library. The bug was introduced back in 2012. And apparently some preview units of the Google Home Mini, Google's latest Home Assistant, suffered a problem where they would constantly record whatever happened in the room. The way the Google Home Mini is designed is just like most of these Home Assistants, that it reacts to certain keywords 
or in this case also to a long press on the panel on top of the device. Now apparently this pressure sensor was defective and registered always on which then in turn led to all audio being transmitted back to Google. Google actually reacted pretty well to this and now again these are preview units that were handed out at Google events. The device is not officially for sale yet as far as I know. They immediately collected the device from the user and started debugging and trying to figure out what exactly happened which then led them to the defective sensor. As a user of the device you can review everything it did send to Google via the My Activity page. So this is probably something that you should do anyway in order to make sure the device functions properly. And talking about spying tools that uh, people may install in their houses, uh, cameras of course have always been a target and there is a new tool in order to find cameras that may be leaking video stream. Uh, the name of the tool is Camrata. It's being distributed as a Docker image on GitHub. So the source code is available and will scan a network for open RTSP streams. will try to log in using standard passwords and then also find the actual RTSP stream route and then summarize all of the results. Pretty neat tool and probably something that you could potentially run in a network if you know there are multiple cameras present. Well, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.